Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here, and obviously I'm about to do an unboxing. This box is courtesy of Jordan Z, an amazing Aquarimax supporter. And he just decided to send me the contents of this package, for which I am very grateful. Um, And I'd just like to thank all of our backers on Patreon. Jordan is one of our backers on Patreon as well. And we have some new Patreon backers added to this list, as you might see. Really grateful for all your help, especially during these uncertain times. It really helps, more than you know. So, really, really excited about this. Oh, it looks like there's something in here I totally wasn't expecting. Oh, look at that. Let me see if I can show you this. This is a complete surprise. I want to make sure you can see this well. It's a rubber ducky isopod shirt. So what does it say? Rubber ducky, Cubaris rubber ducky, the isopod source. Oh, and there it says rubber ducky, you're the one. I had missed that. I love that. Just like the, uh, the famous song made popular by Ernie the Muppet. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time so much fun. You know that one. So that's really cool. Thank you, Jordan. That was a total surprise. He didn't tell me about that part. He did clue me in to what else is coming in here, which I assume is right in here. Very well packed. So basically what Jordan did is he got this for me from the isopod source, just to make sure there's, there's no confusion about what happened. Okay. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here. Oh, I can see some little peeking out there. I might as well show you. 10 Porcelio Expanses. And as I'm getting this open, I'd just like to tell you, years ago, before, uh, these were available in the U.S. They were just European hobbyists keeping these. They are a native of Spain. European hobbyists were keeping them. And uh, I saw pictures of them and said, Oh, I would love to get that species. Well before they were really even here in the U.S. And of course since then, they have been captive bred in the U.S. And I have a permit to have them shipped to me. Ooh, there's a lovely one right there. I'm going to get uh, another deli cup so I can kind of sort through this uh, packing material. Just a second. All right, now I just decided to put their uh, interim enclosure down under everything, just in case I drop something, that's always important. Just wanted to show you the enclosure. For the uh, large Spanish Porcelio, generally you want a very dry area, so this is very dry over here for three quarters of the enclosure approximately. I've got several pieces of cork bark that are nice and concave, as well as Supreme Gecko always recommends for the Spanish Porcelio uh, because it allows them to get up off the substrate. So I have several pieces like that cut from a cork tube. Got some, I believe this is either maple or oak bark. I'm not sure which one. It's one of the two. Here, lots of leaf litter, of course, and then they've got their damp corner over here. And then this piece of cork bark is close enough to the damp area that if they want to be a little damper, they can go here and you know, regulate their own moisture requirements. But now let's dig in. the container and see what we can see. Well, there's one. It's a nice one. I love these. Like I said, this is one of the species I just looked at and thought, wow, these are just fantastic. They have some really cool nicknames too. Porcelia expansis, of course, is their scientific name, but they're also known as Beetlejuice isopods, dragon isopods, and so on. I love the contrast on that pattern. And there's some variability in it too. You notice this one is not patterned the same way as the other. And they're very wide and they have very interesting skirts in comparison to a lot of the other isopods here. Whoop. This one looks like a male. You can look at those long uropods and that just tips you up to the fact that it is a male. Even though it's not fully grown, these do get pretty big. But uh, yeah, I think that probably indicates 
the other larger one in here is a female and the smaller one it may be too too small to tell at this point um, I don't want to to force this one to crawl off my hand I want to be really gentle with it there I'll put it on the leaf oh and then I inadvertently flicked it off there we go back in focus I'm trying to stay in focus I'm just digging through this moss a little bit and the leaves uh, to see what we can see. And I'm just kind of checking through the moss because even though these are not full grown, as many of you already know, many isopods can reproduce at a size much smaller than their actual maximum adult size. They, they reach ma breeding maturity much, much younger than that. So let's see if I can get a focus on this one having a little bit of trouble with the focus that looks like another female though I think right there yeah, I think that's what that is so now we're up to four and at least one of them is a male which is good and just trying to be really really careful here would not want to lose any ones that were ensconced into the moss there. There's another. Are we up to six now? I think, and this looks like probably another female, but it is a little young. All right. We've got the, the budgie chirping away in the background. I think these are seven and eight right here. And I'm not sure, but I think those are both. Oh, they're not showing male characteristics yet. Um, they may later, we'll see. And try to get this one out here. Whoop. Just going to scoop some moss out first. Oh, I dropped one right into the enclosure there, onto the moss. So I'm going to pull that out. There's one. That's why I always do it you know, in a place where I can easily see them and preferably in the container. So that should be nine, I think, unless I lost count somewhere along the way, which is entirely possible. And that would mean this is likely our 10th and possibly final, although sometimes there's a little bit of an overcount. So I don't want to jump to any conclusions that there are any isopods in here yet. I'm um, just being really careful. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And that is why we want to be really careful. One of these is almost certainly a male, the one to the left. It's almost certainly a male. And the other one is a little young. And then this one here appears to be a female, most likely. So I believe that is an overcount, which is always good. Always helps get things started. I wasn't sure exactly the size of the uh, ice pods I was going to get. So um, here, here we go. Just scoop you up really gently there. Uh, so I just used this small six quart for now because it's a small young colony. And I, I just wanted to make sure that I could, you know, keep an eye on them and keep them close together. Once they get bigger, of course, this species uh, and the colony itself gets bigger, I will have to move them because this is not a big enough for a, a mature colony of these, but it will be adequate for them for probably a few months anyway. There's two. I just want to get a final count here. And that's three, four. I think. I think that's four. Unless there's one hiding under another one. Okay, nobody on this leaf. And this is five, six. Seven, eight. Nine. Ten, eleven. So unless I missed count, there is an overcount of one, and I think maybe I missed one somewhere along the way. There may be twelve in here, but eleven or twelve. Definitely an overcount. Very happy with these. Beautiful isopods. They're a good size because they're not, you know, they're not gonna be too old because they're young enough that they'll 
have plenty of reproduction in them because they probably haven't reached sexual maturity yet, which is great. They'll have a lot of life left in them. I want to get some close-ups, of course, of these guys. They're so amazing. Just look at those patterns, like I mentioned before. Patterns are variable. No two seem exactly alike. They kind of remind me of the patterns on the uh, Porcelio ornatus yellow dot, but uh, much more striking and invisible. Very, very cool isopods. And what unboxing would be complete without a shot from the macro lens? I really like how the macro lens highlights some details that are otherwise a little bit more difficult to notice. I like how it shows the alternating bands of colors on the antennae and just the texture of the carapace and so on, as long as I can keep it in focus. I am really excited to be working with these. Thank you again to Jordan Z for sending me these fabulous isopods. And this is the first time I've gotten isopods from Isopod Source, and I am very happy. Thanks for watching today, everyone. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.